renovated retirement with charlie jewett oh no i think i'm about to have another episode hello my friends family and followers welcome back to the renovating retirement podcast this is charlie jewett i don't know what day it is i don't know what time it is i don't know what's going on on the planet all we do is sit inside and wear hazmat suits and masks and try not to get the virus yes These are the inside days. You'd think, you would think, just saying, you'd think I'd be cranking out two podcasts a day. But the reality is I've got a national business and more people are home and more people are available and it has been busy, 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 busy. But I do have my list of 200 episodes that I haven't created yet that all have titles or outlines to some different uh, level of development, I guess is the right word. And today I'm going to do an episode, episode 172. Uh, called even saving 100% of your income doesn't work. And the, the idea here is if you find a strategy, no matter how popular it is, if you find a strategy where saving 100% of the money you make still can't provide for your retirement needs because of the way that it functions internally or the tax treatment, if you find something that wouldn't work if you saved every dollar you made, how many dollars that you make do you really think you should put towards a strategy like that? Yeah, if your answer was a resounding zero, then you and I are on the same track. Uh, We're going to talk about a picture, and I'll I'll hopefully get it posted up on uh, my Instagram, which is charliespictures.com. Charlie's with an S, not plural, but they're mine. Possessive, I guess. C-H-A-R-L-I-E-S, pictures. That's plural. P-I-C-T-U-R-E-S. Charliespictures.com will take you right to my Instagram page, and I will try to get this picture up here. But this podcast comes from a picture and a conversation uh, that I just something that popped into my mind at one point where I thought, hmm, what if the IRS, what if the government would give us a tax deduction, an unlimited tax deduction to put away as many dollars as we wanted to? So instead of having a limit of 6,000 or 6,500 or whatever it is for your age, uh, whatever year you're listening to this, if we could save all of the money we made, would it work out better? Would it work out well for us? So I went and started playing with the numbers and doing some math. Say, so what if you make $60,000 a year? Now, your spouse might make income too. That's fine. They probably have to for my scenario. Uh, but what if you made $60,000 per year of income and you were allowed to save 100% of it, all of it, into an IRA or a 401k? doesn't matter. 403b, 457. You were allowed to put $60,000 a year away pre-tax and have no income the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate later, not now sacrifice, right? You go to a Starbucks, you spend five bucks on a coffee, you go read a book where they tell you you're the devil for doing that. And it costs you $6 billion at retirement because $5 a day compounded by some fake number is a gazillion. No, we don't want that. We don't need that kind of guilt. That's what money is for. It's for spending on lifestyle. It's for creating the life that you want here and taking care of your loved ones. That's why we're doing retirement planning, so that we'll have money at that time of life during 30, 40 years of unemployment as well. So money is meant to be spent. We're not looking for guilt here, but certainly the ultimate sacrifice in, you know, how much of your income are you putting away? And people say 15, 20, 25%. We're like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. And it is. But the ultimate sacrifice would be all of it. You don't even take a paycheck. You're somehow living off of your spouse or whatever it is. However that works out, it's a fake scenario. So I'm not looking to make it look realistic. I'm making it unrealistic to make a point so you can see what's going on and why the IRS sort of created this and why it's become so popular uh, and pushed upon us. If you put all of your income away, $60,000 a year, and somehow the IRS gave you the full tax deduction on all of it, there was no limit. And for 30 straight years, you had a real rate of return after fees. So real rate of return, I mean compound annual growth rate, not the mathematical mean, not the average. Remember, 100,000 goes down 50%, you have 50,000. It goes up 50% from that new low, you only have $75,000, but your mathematical mean, the average that the industry is allowed to put on your statements and advertise to you, the number the industry is allowed to use for you, which is deceptive, is the mathematical mean. So it went down 50, it went up 50, you're averaging zero over two years. Why? Negative 50 plus a positive 50 is zero, divided by the number of periods, two years. Hey, buddy, you're averaging zero. 
I'm telling you, every time you see what's, you know, the stock market makes 8% or 9% or 10% or if you're, uh, I'm trying to remember my my name for this guy, but if you're uh, a popular radio and podcast financial host who's gone into most of the churches to hurt people, and you say the market's been making 12% compounding forever, and yet somehow you're supposed to pay off your mortgage because it costs you a tremendous three and a half or four before tax deductions. And why would anybody want to earn 12 and pay three and a half? That's stupid. You should just not not pay three and a half and uh, give up the right to earn 12. So his own teachings don't make any sense. But that doesn't matter. All of those numbers are fake because they're using the mathematical mean. If you want to prove it to yourself, I can't remember if I've put this on any podcasts, but for all the agents on my team, by the way, if you've ever considered getting into the financial services, please get in touch with me. We need it more now than ever. We probably need 100,000 agents to change this country. I'm going to train a 1,000 just myself. Um, if you want to be on the team and be part of the revolution, just get in touch. Charlie at jewettwealth.com, C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com, like the word wealthy or wealth management. So Charlie at jewettwealth.com, just reach out and say, hey, I've thought of being in the industry. Or if you're already licensed, say I'm licensed and I'd be interested in your training program. Or hey, I'm looking for a change in my life. Or I'm a housewife and don't know what to do. Or I just lost my job and would rather not go back to breathing on each other through cubicles. Can you show me how to do something nationwide from home? Or I'm an evangelist for good, but I get to stay home and work in a safe environment with my family. Yes, 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 yes. Get in touch. Charlie at JewettWealth.com or search Charlie Jewett online. You can find me. So... Here's the thing. If you want to see average rate of return versus real rate of return, just go to Kager, C-A-G-R, C-A-G-R. Actually, you're probably better off starting with S&P. I'm just in Google. S&P 500 Kager. That stands for Compound Annual Growth Rate. Compound Annual Growth Rate, C-A-G-R. S&P 500 Kager Calculator. And I like the one from Money Chimp on my side, it turns up first. It says Kager of the stock market, annualized returns, blah, blah. This is the calculator I'm used to. And just throw something in there. You probably heard me say this over and over and over and over again. Throw in the most current years. And I'm not cherry picking. Somebody said that once, which is ridiculous. When you're planning for the worst and hoping for the best, it's not cherry picking to show some of the worst years. It's accurate risk assessment. It's saying, what are things we've actually seen happen that may happen to you. So to say cherry picking is stupid. We don't live in the 1970s. So I don't really care what the market did in the 1970s. From 2000 to 2019, I'm typing it into the calculator, including dividends, hit calculate, says the market's average rate of return from the liars in the industry, basically every statement you'd ever read or every advisor or joke or broker is going to tell you it made 7.65. Well, they're not even going to tell you that. Even though that number's a lie, they're going to tell you 12 or 10 or 8 or something stupid. And this is before their fee. And this is only if they're including all the dividends, which if you look at any portfolio built by a money manager, they're not going to put you just in the S&P 500 where you get all the dividends of the S&P 500. They're going to spread you around to some stuff that doesn't have dividends to try to make it look like they're worth something or that they're doing something that you can't do on your own, which you can't, which is why Warren Buffett doesn't tell his wife to go use some broker when he dies. He says, buy index funds. Hello, every single sign, every single sign, 100% of the signs in the industry, except for your emotions about your broker, 100% of all of the data points to the fact that if you're paying somebody to put you into multiple different investments that could go up or down, you are making less money, will permanently hurt your retirement and every generation after you because of your affection for that broker. You're paying them to hurt you. There's no evidence that anybody that gets paid to manage stocks, bonds, and mutual funds can put more money in your pocket over the long run than just buying the S&P 500 from Vanguard or Fidelity or somebody like this. And then all of the evidence on annuities, land, life insurance show that over the last 20, 30, 40 years, the strategies without the chance of losing 20 or 30% like we just saw in the market are outperforming even buying the index fund. You're at least two steps away from even starting to build a financial plan that you can count on if you're still in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds with a money manager. If you have a money manager, 100% you're hurting yourself. Doing work based on data, 
Now, your, your whiz-bang guy or girl could be the first one over the next 20 or 30 years to somehow beat the S&P 500 index. But how do you know that? Why would you count on that? I don't understand. The relationship is really that important. What do these advisors do? What, what kind of crack, what kind of crack cocaine do they put in the air at Edward Morgan Lynch to where they can put you in some crappy portfolio that every single other person is in, yet make you feel like it was customized for you? Have disclosures on the website that say we're going to rip you off and we have revenue sharing agreements and aren't even going to look at every investment, but only one, the ones that pay us. Charge you a fee, not be worth the fee, underperform the market, underperform annuities, underperform life insurance, underperform, underperform everything except for maybe CDs or mattress money. And you're afraid to fire them. I've seen it thousands of times. I don't know what kind of crack cocaine. I mean, I think, the div I think it's easier for people to get a divorce than to leave an advisor. And I can tell you, four years into a divorce, it's a horrible experience. And it still seems that there's more people getting divorces than they are leaving their advisor. Somehow, the crack cocaine is like, ah, oh, there's 7 billion people on the planet, but somehow the best advisor in the entire land happened to live in my backyard and everyone else just gets screwed, but I get to work with them. How is that possible? How is that po At a time like this, where we're all doing Zoom meetings and Skype and we're, we're virtual to try not to get the virus and die. How, at a time like this, is the most obvious thing in your life not that location doesn't matter anymore? The transfer of data does not require you to be in the same town as anybody. Do you think the president is flying to every other country every single day? to talk to them about their coronavirus numbers or do you think maybe somebody sends an email or one of his whatever like people on his team gets on the phone and goes hey what are your numbers and they go here's my number and they go tell trump here's the number and he's like well wh why didn't you go in person i can't do a trump imitation so i'm not going to try why didn't you just go there in person I, I why would i go in person i just need a number wait a minute isn't this all about trust yeah it's about trust i trust him not to lie to me on the phone why would i have to be in person we're not even allowed to shake hands anymore. Seriously, why do you have to be in person? I'm going to ask you again. What are the chances that the best mind, the best brain in the entire country on mortgage planning, estate planning, retirement planning, insurance planning, and tax planning, and how to blend them and give you 100% tax-free retirement, beating the stock market without the risk, what are the chances that that person lives in your town even if your town is huge, if you live in San Francisco or New York, what are the chances that that person lives in your town as opposed to anywhere else in the world? Close to zero. So if you have a local advisor, you're probably hurting yourself. And I only have good news or good news if we do a second opinion. It's good news. You're doing incredibly well, and I will probably try to hire them if anybody was able to beat one of my financial plans. Or good news. You're not with the best person, which means I'm giving you incredible information, and you now can be with the best person. Anyway, back to the numbers. Average rate of return on this website, uh, S&P 500, Kager, CAGR, calculator through MoneyChimp from 2000 to 2019. Average rate of return says 7.65, which, if people were honest, it still might sound attractive to people, but that's not the real rate of return. It's a nothing number. It means absolutely nothing. It's the same as saying 100,000 went to 50, went back up to $75,000. You lost 25,000 bucks, but you're averaging zero. You're like, I'm not averaging zero. I'm losing money. How can I be averaging zero and losing money? Well, because they pick the mathematical mean so they can lie to you. Well, the average rate of return for the stock market was 6.01 on December 31st, 2019. For 19 years, 19 years, pre-fee, you know, before fees and before taxes, we're talking about IRAs, it was 6.01, and that's before we had this 20%, 30% correction or whatever it goes to. Maybe it'll just pop back up and nobody will lose any money, but right now we're in the middle of kind of a correction. So if, here's my fake scenario, if you had $60,000 a year of income, could live on nothing, could give it all up and make the ultimate sacrifice, and the IRS would give you a tax deduction for all of it to put it away, and it compounded after all fees, Real rate of return, compound annual growth, growth rate at 7% for the entire 30-year period, you would amass 
an IRA value of over $5.6 million. So $5,667,647.18, blah, blah, blah. Forget all that. $5.7 million, $5.6 million, $5.6.5 million. Well, that's awesome. Cool. But it's all pre-tax money. You got a whole bunch of tax deductions along the way. I mean, it was exciting. Every year you saved, uh, I don't know, $17,000, $18,000 of taxes. On that $60,000 contribution, you saved whatever taxes you would have paid on the $60,000. What did you trade it for? You traded it for the taxes you're going to pay on your distributions. Well, how do IRAs work? You put $60,000 a year in for 30 years, hoping to take out $15,000 a year? No. Hoping to take out 30? No. I mean, even if you took out 60, just your principal, wouldn't it last 30 years? Wouldn't the basic plan be if I had no rate of return? I put 60 away for 30 years, saved it up, take 60 out for 30 years. Money in, money out, no rate of return. That'd be nice, but that's not how it works. The way retirement planning works is you put in small numbers, monthly or yearly, to hopefully take out big numbers. Why is that? Well, you're saving part of your income to try to replace a bigger part of your income or possibly all of your income. Yes, you might have Social Security. Some people don't. Some teachers don't. But the distributions are almost always bigger than the contributions. So just basic tax planning, what would you rather save money on? You know, what would you rather avoid paying taxes on? Small contributions or big distributions? How come your CPA never says it to you like that? All that studying to get the CPA exam, all of that research, all of those numbers, just years of them doing 300, 400 tax returns a year or whatever they do, all of that math, and the CPA doesn't have the sense to just say, well, you put small numbers in, you take big numbers out, which one would you like to save taxes on? Or maybe, oh my goodness, if they were a genius and had the, the common sense to ask a question or two, say, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, in your family, your own beliefs, <clears throat> do you think taxes are going to go up or down? And if you say, I think they're going to go up, they should turn around very easily go. My recommendation would be that you pay taxes today while they're low and if you think they're going to go up that we don't we don't postpone them using IRAs and 401ks but is that what they're teaching at H&R Block is that what your independent you know CPA or enrolled agent or tax preparer has asked you and told you or ever even thought to think about or do they just robot just gotta get me all your statements and give me your numbers and let me type them into boxes i don't even sleep for three months i just i sleep on the ground in the same clothes and i eat donuts why why don't you ask a few questions get on the right side of financial services telling the truth and do your job these are tax professionals and those of us who are good financial professionals who carry the, the licenses have to do their job for them because they've failed so miserably and most people in the world are putting money into 401ks and IRAs when 100% of them you ask, do you think taxes are going up or down? They'll say up. So why am I talking about big distributions? Because if you amass an IRA of $5.6 million, 5.66764.7.18, and if the 4% rule was still safe, well, what's the 4% rule? The 4% rule was something that William Bengen, someone actually from San Diego here where I live <clears throat> a long time ago, he won a Nobel Prize for saying, well, what? once you've amassed a chunk of money, What's safe to take out every year? Because the whole point of retirement planning is, is income. It's distributions, you know. That's the whole point. Actually, the whole way they sell IRAs is say, hey, you postpone your taxes to a later date because you're going to be in a lower tax bracket when you take in distributions. And now at 72, used to be 70 and a half. Now at 72, they force you to take distributions called RMDs, required minimum distributions, which is interesting, folks. I get bashed so much for talking about annuities, which give you a guaranteed lifetime income. And what are RMDs? Required lifetime income. It's not guaranteed. It's just forced. <laughs> you will have to take a lifetime income. It's just whether it stays steady or goes up or goes down. A lot of people's are going to go down if they leave their money in IRAs in the stock market, or at least if the market performs the way it has for the last 19 years. But if the 4% rule still applied today, and many, some of you know this, some of you don't, but William Bengen's research was before all the 
sort of common most recent crashes that we've had so it doesn't work anymore you can only safely take out about 2.8 percent which is just silly like you have a million bucks in an ira you can take out twenty eight thousand dollars a year and maybe have it run out of money on the day you die that is like the grotiest retirement plan there's nothing sexy about that i don't know i don't know how anybody leaves money in the market i just don't know how anybody leaves money in the market period particularly if you're paying a broker i have clients by the way who are good they're good at this or they've listened and they've learned and they say please leave a hundred thousand dollars and let me keep it in vanguard's s p 500 fund or they know how to wait for something to get very cheap or to buy stock in zoom before the coronavirus and then it jumps up 22 percent they're good at it not like money managers who just set it and forget it and spend their time i don't want to say that phrase but spend their time trying to make you feel good if the four percent rule worked and you had 5.6 blah 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 million dollars you could safely take out about 225,000 bucks 226,000 dollars per year 226,000 dollars per year that would be your after tax or your pre-tax income it would give you an after tax income i just went into some calculators i picked an expensive state like california i picked a cheap state like uh, alaska you would end up after taxes because you chose to pay taxes on the two hundred twenty-six thousand dollar distributions not the sixty thousand dollar contribution saved all the income you made in 30 years didn't take a dime of income cut all those deductions now you've got two hundred twenty-six thousand dollars a year coming out and you're going to net roughly between expensive state like California, cheap state like Alaska, about $160,000 to $175,000 per year. And then here's the most important question. The most important question. How much is $160,000 to $175,000 worth 30 years from now? And what relationship does that have to the $60,000 you could have had? Well, if you don't know how to calculate inflation i'm sure there's a million ways you can do it but you can use the same calculators that i teach you to use for uh calculating the future value of an account future value calculator so type future value calculator into google i like the one from calculator.net so in calculator.net i put in 30 periods for number of periods i put starting amount of sixty thousand dollars and i put interest rate of 3.22 and i'm asking what will this turn into in 30 years well same thing with inflation if I have 60 today and inflation's at 3.22 what will be the equivalent of 60 in 30 years you can do it with an inflation calculator if you feel more comfortable with it but you end up with the same numbers and you want to know what the number says I mean maybe you'll find it on your own in 30 years at 3.22 percent inflation you'd need hundred and fifty five thousand dollars and a little bit of change to have the same lifestyle as sixty thousand dollars now i purposefully didn't adjust the 3.22 to make my math work out perfectly to make it be 160 or 175 because inflation cpi is not accurate anyway i don't know how many of you know that inflation used to include more things but my opinion is since some things like raises on social security are based on these numbers my personal opinion is the government wants them to be lower not higher so they removed some things like tell me if this shocks you uh inflation the calculation for inflation does not include anything from the food or energy sectors food or energy these are two places you have a tendency to notice when stuff gets more expensive milk bread things like that so it doesn't even include that it doesn't include the cost of buying a house it only includes rent because of some strange reasons you know on, here's something from uh business insider i just did a search i just searched for real rate of inflation because I, I know it's not 3.22 that's just a number they say has been the average and you're going to hear why i'm using it in a moment but unbiased private sector efforts this is from business insider unbiased private sector efforts to calculate the real rate of inflation so including the things that cpi leaves out have yielded a rate of around 7 to 13 percent per year 7 to 13 percent per year <laughs> so let's let's use the low number because i'm a conservative come on let's do this let's use the low number and i'm going to go back to my calculator uh 30 periods this is my uh future future value calculator that i'm using to calculate an inflation adjusted 
income equivalent to $60,000. Number of periods, 30 years, starting amount, 60000 Interest rate, 7. Calculate. Oh, interesting. So after taxes, you'd need a take-home of $456,735. So somewhere between $155,000 and $456,000 would allow you, after 30 years of giving up all income, not taking a single dollar for yourself, you don't take money for 30 years, and you basically get the equivalent of what you could have had for the next 30 years, unless inflation is higher than 3.22. And here's a bunch of other helpful, convincing unlesses, if that's a word. What could mess this up? I mean, we're it's a terrible financial plan. Like, don't take an income for 30 years and then get the income you could have had the whole time. Terrible plan. And I'm assuming after fees that we're making 7%. And I'm assuming inflation is only CPI, 3.22. What else could mess it up? Well, being single would mess it up because you have to pay more taxes on the $226,000. Having any other income in your life, pushing some of that $226,000 up into a higher tax bracket, Social Security is going to mess this up. Pension income is going to mess it up. Having rental units, basically any good news in your life is bad news in an IRA. Isn't that odd? Any good news in your life during the retirement years, like, oh my goodness, Social Security gave you a raise. Oh my gosh, your pension goes forever. Oh my goodness, rents are going up. All of that creates bad news for the money you're taking out of IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, things like that. And who knew that when they set them up? Hello, the IRS put those two words together. It spells theirs, folks. Theirs. The IRS knew this when they came up with this idea of the qualified plan. So being single will mess it up. Having other income like Social Security, pension, or rent will mess it up. Inflation being higher than 3.22, which we know it will be, would mess it up. Oh, hello, tax rates going up. Well, that's interesting, Charlie. What do you mean? I calculated how much tax you'd pay on the $226,000 a year using today's tax rates. In Alaska and California, I use today's tax rates. And we know the taxes, according to David McKnight, according to a lot of the teachers out there, we know the tax rates are probably at an all-time low now that Trump lowered them for a short period of time. Many of us are looking at what tax rates have been for the last 100, 200 years and going, this is as low as we're ever going to see in our lifetime. So what could truly mess up this plan? Tax rates going up by 3%, 5%, 10%, or God forbid, 20%. Not earning a real after-fees net of 7% each year, which I am not sure how you could possibly do that from all of the research I've seen on using an IRA and putting it into a stock market, especially if you're using a money manager. So we've got a plan that says take no income at all for 30 years. Hope that the IRS gives you a tax deduction on the entire $60,000, which they won't. Hope that it makes 7% after fees the entire time, real rate of return, which it hasn't and probably won't. Hope that the 4% rule would still be safe, even though as of today it's not, but hope that somehow it comes back, that it is safe so you can take out 4%. Hope that taxes don't go up. Hope that you're married. Hope that you don't have Social Security or a pension or any rental income coming in. And then you might, might just get the equivalent of the income you could have had for the entire 30 years. Who's jumping up and down, ready to go? And that's the question on this picture, which you'll see at my Instagram account, charliespictures.com. If it doesn't work with 100% of your income, why are you putting any of your income there in the first place? I understand on a 401k, if you're getting 100% match, there's an argument for that. And if you listen to my early podcast episodes, you'll hear that I encourage that. I've since learned some things that sometimes lead me to make the recommendation that people don't even take that free money. You know, there's a lot of stuff that comes for free that you don't want. Go on to Craigslist. You can find a lot of hot tubs for free. You can probably find, you know, what if a friend gave you a car that got four miles to the gallon? You're like, yay, I want it, right? There's a lot of stuff for free that you may not want or might not be worth it. And the match at times, depending on your age, because think about your 401k. 
Yes, you get a match, but you're trapped in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, a limited limited amount that your plan offers. It's not really managed. You don't really have somebody managing it. Sort of set it and forget it. It's up to you. It's got higher fees, according to Tony Robbins' book, Money Master the Game, than, than not using the 401k and just using an IRA or some broker or something, using Vanguard. And you're not allowed to use the strategies that have beat the stock market for the last 30, 40 years, like annuities, life insurance, land, things like that. By the way, you are allowed to buy land inside of a 401k IRA or Roth IRA, depending on uh, if you still work there and blah, blah, blah. Um, it's the question, what's that word? I can't remember what that word is where you ask a question and you're not really looking for an answer. But if it doesn't work with 100% of your income, the most exaggerated fashion, most exaggerated version of this, if it doesn't work, then why would you put any money into a strategy like that? Folks, if you are of the belief that taxes are going to go up and you are of the belief that inflation is more than 3.22%, if you are of the belief that you'd like your income to be higher when you retire than it is today, if you are of those beliefs, you should not be postponing taxes until a later date when you want to be in a higher tax bracket and you think they will be higher. You want to pay taxes today on the small number. Pay taxes on the seed and get it over with and avoid taxes on the harvest. If you'd like help in any way from the person that referred you to this podcast or from myself, just get in touch. Charlie at jewettwealth.com. C-H-A-R C-H, how do I spell my name? C-H-A-R-L-I-E at J-E-W-E-T-T wealth.com. Charlie at jewettwealth.com. Or you can call me 888-285-2268. I think you people are the best. Hang in there, stay safe, and we'll see you when we're allowed to go outside. Renovate retirement with Charlie Jewett. That's all, folks.